So welcome everybody. This is our uh, presentation for today for the SL MOOC 2017. We have Edward Tarber here who's uh, um, in real life is Dieter, Dieter Hain. He's going to be talking about making of a web-based virtual world. The lecture will be about a creation of a web-based virtual world platform and the features it's providing for ed educators. To get there, you can click on this first link that I put into the chat if you'd like to go and visit it after the talk. Now, let me tell you something about Dieter Hain. Am I pro uh, saying that properly, Dieter? Your last name? You're very, you're very close. Oh, uh, His name is Heine. Heine. German. Okay. Yeah. Dieter Heine. Okay, and I'm going to put some of Perfect. his bio into the chat as well. So Dieter uh, Edward Heine, Heine, and he's Edward Tarber in Second Life, was born in 1966 and raised in Munich in Germany, making first contact with computers and programming in 1981, set the course for a master's degree in computer sciences from the Technical University in Munich in 1991. In parallel, he founded his first consulting company in 1988, which is still in operation, specializing in software architecture and design, as well as quality and security management. Since 2007, um, hold on two seconds here. <laughs> I, I can't copy and paste at the same time I'm talking. I don't know why, sorry. Since 2007, Dieter is a frequent metaverse traveler through almost all available grids, evaluating their usability for education, collaboration, and entertainment. To provide a safe, simple, and reliable entry-level access to the metaverse, he started to create his own web-based virtual platform from scratch, and that's what he'll be talking about today, the making of Cyber Lounge. It can be accessed through a browser without any installation or or plugins. So welcome, uh, Dieter, and the floor is yours. We're very interested in hearing what you have to say today. Okay, thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to be here today and to be able to speak about something I'm really passionate about. And it's something I like to call a uh, software with a purpose. Um, I will take off uh, from where uh, Sebi left us uh, on Monday. So he gave us already uh, some, some details about web-based worlds. And uh, as a creator of, uh, of the platform, I will give you some more uh, intimate detail about uh, the planning or the reasons behind the creation of such a platform. Um, so uh, I will tell you about uh, really how I build it, um, the benefits and the features, uh, and also some disadvantages of running inside the browser. Uh, I will give you uh, something or some information about the architecture and the technologies involved in the development. Uh, that's maybe not interesting for everyone, but if you are uh, interested in technology a little bit, that will give you um, a glimpse into the current uh, development in the browser. And finally, um, I will also give you some insights about what I've planned for the future, especially uh, in regard to education and teaching. Afterwards, we will have uh, time for, for discussions. And uh, if you want, we can also meet again in, in Cyber Launch itself. So uh, to talk there and uh, yeah, so uh, if you have some suggestions in the end or ideas for future developments, I'm always open uh, to such ideas because uh, such a platform can only grow if I have input from many, many people, especially from educators or uh, people running nonprofit organizations. This helps me tremendously in improving and enhancing the platform over the time. Uh, here's uh, a short agenda. We will start with an introduction and then go over to the, the goals behind the platform. Uh, I will talk about the features which are already available. Um, afterwards, then the, the technical part, how everything is built, on which uh, which tools are used and everything. Um, cyber launch in action. Uh, we can do. Uh, have some images from different uh, regions or we can later have a, a field trip. And also some apart about the future. So what I have planned, uh, what's already in motion. And as I said, finally, we will have uh, time for discussion.
So this is just a recap of the introduction uh, Maggie already gave you. So uh, just we'll skip this quickly and start with a definition. So uh, what's a, a virtual world? According to Wikipedia, a virtual world is defined as an asynchronous persistent network of people represented by avatars facilitated uh, by networked computers. The, the most important uh, parts of this are the three terms I uh, listed below. Synchronous, it means uh, if anything happens, it will happen for all users which are online at the same time. So you really have the immersive feeling to think you are there. And if it happens, it happens for everyone. Persistent, also important because that's um, the big difference to uh, online games, which all are also uh, often termed as virtual worlds, also like World of Warcraft, for example. But there is no real persistence because some uh, quests you can do again and again, and everything is reset after you log out. In a real virtual world, uh, things are persistent. If you make changes, if you change the texture of a wall, it will be uh, the same way when you log in next time. That's one very important feature. And finally, we will have uh, the people, the users, uh, represented as avatars, so you also have this immersive feeling of being there. Okay, so, um, but uh, what was my uh, vision of creating something? Virtual worlds today are very complicated for some people, and I wanted to just uh, to be able uh, to enter a virtual world without installing any software. Don't have to download a viewer, install a, a viewer, make some uh, configurations to connect to a specified grid. So, um, I wanted to go into a virtual world from anywhere. And also, uh, another big uh, issue is uh, that's in here in the, uh, below this no problems with firewalls. Uh, when I started running my own uh, grid servers, I noticed I wasn't able to connect from universities, from schools, because of their firewall settings. So I thought uh, it must be possible with current technology to build something which can be accessed from everywhere. So that was, was uh, one important thing on my to-do list, to have a, a server which can be accessed. If you have internet access, you can reach my server. And also, uh, to enter the virtual world, it has to be very, very easy like clicking uh, a hyperlink. So you click the link and you enter the world. That's all. And this way, uh, yeah, with this technology behind, uh, you can share uh, a virtual space and uh, the experiences uh, there with literally everyone inside the browser. So no other software is needed. Uh, it's a bit slow with resin. So, uh, why web worlds? I think Selby on Monday already gave uh, some great ideas why web worlds are so important. Um, the curious thing is uh, there are many, many goods out there uh, which grew uh, over the last uh, couple of years, but uh, Usually, you always meet the same people online, uh, no matter if you are in Kitely, in Worlds, everything. It's a closed group and the number is only growing very, very slowly. And the reasons I already told before, for many it's too complicated or time consuming to, uh, to learn how to uh, install and to use um, uh, a viewer. Uh, there are statistics that uh, so especially for Second Life, people usually take a couple of weeks to uh, know and to ha learn how to use the basic features of the viewer. And again, there are too many grids with too many regions. So uh, even in, uh, in in Second Life, I try, uh, uh, if my last numbers are correct, there are almost 100,000 regions uh, on their servers. And that's way more than the usual number of concurrent users online. So it means you have 
in an average less uh, than one user per region, or in other words, we have uh, some well visited regions and the rest are empty. So uh, that's uh, something about uh, which were motivating me to, to create something new, because on the other side, um, wrong. almost every internet user knows how to use a browser. Um, how uh, He knows uh, how web pages are interconnected and that there are links between pages and how to activate a, a hyperlink. And also most people should know how to control a character in a video game because uh, controlling an avatar is mostly the same as at least for beginners which don't have to do anything more than to run around and uh, to activate voice to, uh, to be able to talk to other people. So this brings us to our second definition now, uh, a web-based virtual world. What's the difference to a classical? So it's a virtual world running entirely in your browser. Uh, entry and basic handling navig or hand navigation are very, very easy. So there's uh, only a very shallow uh, learning curve. And also uh, many things you're already used from uh, the complete virtual worlds like Inverts, Kitely, Second Life are already there to be used too. So uh, the regular things like uh, chat, voice chat, also things like private chats between two people. Uh, you can build your own uh, your own worlds. You can create objects to be shared with others. And you can interact with the environment and with other people in many, many ways. It's very slow. So, so the main goal for me was to create a, a whole platform really as an entry level experience without hurdles and a very shallow learning curve, uh, just to be able to recruit new users um, by providing access to a virtual world just by clicking a hyperlink. So you can really have um, either a link on your page, which will bring you directly um, into the virtual world, or also some, it's uh, also very important because everything is web-based, you can integrate the whole virtual world into your existing web page. So for, for Selby's blog, we made uh, a couple of months ago, we made a, a test and we just inserted an iframe with the whole virtual world into his blog. So people didn't even have to click a link. They opened the page in his blog and were able uh, to enter the virtual world by just by uh, entering a name and selecting an avatar. So I think it's very, also much easier is not possible. So um, the other goals I had was uh, not to create uh, something for very specific purposes, but uh, to be as open-minded as possible. So you can use uh, the browser-based virtual worlds for anything you, you can imagine, because you can build and bring in your own content. Uh, it's also easy uh, to handle a, a large a number of concurrent users. Uh, so far, we didn't manage to crash any region. So even with uh, a two-digit number of uh, people present using voice and everything, everything went smooth. Um, also very important from the beginning was uh, to have the tools uh, inside the world for people to create their own stuff. So uh, we will not rely on external tools. Uh, for which some people have no access to and everything. So everything is integrated into the software on the, in the, inside the browser and you can create everything on your own. So for example, uh, the regions you've already may or may have visited or uh, you can visit with the link uh, which was earlier provided. Uh, the whole content of these regions was created with the built-in tools. So there was no uh, no models from the uh, external tools. Uh, it's possible to in, uh, import Collada files too, but uh, the basic 
uh, architecture that completely with the built-in tools and build a whole library and the whole region where Selby has his daily talks. And uh, also, um, I wanted to have it uh, very easy for anyone and from everywhere. So, uh, as everything is based on a simple web server architecture, it's uh, using only uh, standard ports and, and protocols. So, it means uh, even if you are behind a corporate or institutional firewall, uh, there shouldn't be any problem with accessing uh, my virtual world. So uh, you don't have to hassle with uh, your infrastructure guys and to ask about uh, changing of firewall policies or some allowances of more ports. Everything should work right out of the box. Um, you can create virtual places for many purposes, for teaching, for collaboration, uh, or simply for information exchange uh, in general. And also, in, like I said before, uh, also included uh, all necessary tools uh, into the world. There's even uh, a tool to create your uh, uh, your own animations for your avatar. So you don't need to have uh, external tools like Blender for creating animations or everything. Uh, if you have an idea for a new dance or a new walk animation, you can simply do it on the fly inside uh, the browser. Um, this, this slide will show some uh, mid and long term goals uh, which I have with this platform in, in general. So um, I think this is very important uh, to provide uh, access to information, education, counseling, and even entertainment for everyone. And uh, as the or more people have inter uh, access to the internet than have access to clean water. So this is not a too far-fetched goal. That means uh, in a couple of years, almost everybody on this planet will have access to the internet. And this is also to web-based uh, virtual worlds, which I think are a far better uh, source of information, or especially for education, because you have interactivity. Uh, one other, yeah, I would say I have a dream, but I can also imagine uh, that in the future there will be uh, a whole branch of uh, jobs which can be uh, performed very perfectly in a, in a virtual world. This is, for example, anything to do with customer interaction, complaints management, uh, all such things can be done in a virtual world. Just imagine you have a problem with an electronic device and you simply go online in a virtual world. There um, is a consultant there which can tell you, okay, you have made uh, some mishandling, you have to push this and this button, uh, all working on a 3D model of the device in the virtual world. And the best thing is uh, you, don't, you don't have to know where the person behind the avatar of the customer manager is sitting. It's, it can be in a developing country all over this planet. There's no limit or geographical uh, reference. These jobs can be done or performed from everywhere. And last point is just, uh, which is already for, uh, valid for all virtual worlds, you can build uh, a place for your own, for your friends, and create your own little paradise and your own identity online. So that's also one of the features I've uh, created in, from the beginning. So it's, uh, with my virtual world, it's the same. If you register uh, an official avatar, you always, always get automatically a full region where you can build your own stuff. Okay, here's just a, a brief uh, history, how everything uh, developed. Um, yeah, it's almost six years I started planning uh, and to architect uh, the platform. That's, uh, this was for me uh, the, the best approach as a software architect. I tried 
as much as possible to do everything right from the beginning. Um, I had a look at uh, existing software like Second Life, OpenSim, even Open Wonderland, which is a purely uh, Java-based uh, virtual world platform. And uh, so I tried not to simply emulate them, but I took the, the things I, I thought which were, were good and I also uh, tried to improve the things I thought which were bad and bring it together in a, in a new platform. So I created more or less everything uh, from scratch. Uh, development started uh, in, in 2012. Uh, took me about 15 to, to 18 months to have uh, something which I could uh, put online with a, a, a clear conscience. So um, that's not only because I'm a German, I'm, I'm kind of a perfectionist. So um, I tried to have maybe not all features uh, in place at the beginning, but the features uh, which were there had to work 100%. And I think uh, so far uh, the, the number of bugs uh, in, in the current uh, online version are very, very small. So uh, that means uh, if I add a feature, it's thoroughly tested before I put it online because it's better to have less features than more problems. And so for the last couple of years, um, I had uh, I improved the software continuously. Uh, I'm still in a in a more or less in a, in a third beta phase uh, so uh, already three three grids are, are online so i will tell you later about uh, the different grids and, and their purposes but uh yeah so so far it's uh, almost uh between six and ten servers online to to host all the different regions so uh, what are the benefits uh, if you use this platform uh, it's really 100% uh, browser-based. You don't need to install anything else. There are no plugins. Uh, it's also uh, compatible with almost every modern browser. Uh, that's even uh, true for, for mobile devices. So uh, it will run on Android, on iOS, and everything. Sometimes uh, not all features are available, but uh, as is most uh, often true in software development, uh, time is on your side or my side. And uh, this means uh, if a feature is missing today, probably uh, the manufacturers of the browsers will add it in a, in a couple of months. So for example, um, until now, uh, voice chat was not possible in Safari browsers. But uh, just yesterday, uh, Apple published a development version uh, of the upcoming uh, generation of Safari, which will be available for macOS and uh, for iOS devices. And uh, in the documentation, they wrote that WebRTC then is uh, present. So this means uh, you could uh, join a presentation like this, inclu including voice uh, from an iPad. Um, so uh, it means also it uh, will run uh, on almost uh, any hardware, uh, on desktop PCs, on laptops, on tablets, even smartphones. And I also did some extensive testing uh, with Google Chromebooks because uh, especially uh, in schools, Chromebooks are uh, very popular. And uh, as long as uh, the Chromebook has a decent, it means a graphics card not older uh, than four or five years, even then the, the platform will work. Um, so uh, another thing is, uh, this is, comes more from the non-profit side and for counseling. Uh, you don't have to register with the platform. You can always enter uh, as a guest without any registration. Uh, it only means uh, you cannot uh, build anything because uh, there is no user ID to, to which bind uh, some, some property. But everything else is possible. You can join uh, in the daily talks. You can use voice, chat, everything. And this is all without registration. So uh, the whole platform itself, it's easy to run, easy to use, and it's also easy to create things. Uh, it means Users can create content for other users. So it means you can build objects like uh, furniture and you can share it with others. And these can then 
uh, these people can then use these uh, your creations in their buildings or in, on their property. Um, it's also uh, uh, from the be uh, beginning, it's very easy to uh, extend it. So sometimes uh, we have uh, in our daily meetings, uh, somebody comes up with an idea and I will have it implemented within a couple of days and in the next patch, uh, the new feature is available. And uh, like told before, uh, as it is web based, so it's also uh, you can embed the virtual world in any other uh, web page. So, uh, what are the, the basic features of uh, the platform? You have, like you are used to in Second Drive, you have a detailed uh, three dimensional environment. Uh, there is more or less realistic water uh, and sky. Uh, you have streaming uh, audio and video. That means you can uh, either listen to a radio stream or like I do sometimes uh, if I have larger uh, audiences uh, and, and voice is not uh, convenient, uh, I use uh, a radio stream to broadcast my voice into the whole world. And the good thing is uh, using streaming, you can uh, send your voice not only to one region, but to many regions uh, if you want to. Um, there's also, of course, text and voice chat. Uh, everything is encrypted for safety reasons. Um, some things like uh, this voice, uh, it's based on the technology because uh, if you use uh, voice inside the browser, uh, there are peer-to-peer -peer connections between the browser. So uh, with the voice, no server is involved. Uh, so it makes it even more safe. And yeah, that's uh, also some important points for, for non-profits. Uh, you have uh, avatars uh, representing the users. Um, what I'm working on currently is to have uh, more options to customize your avatar. Uh, I always tell that the main problem is not the technology, but the problem is um, I'm a software developer, not an artist. And <laughs> Uh, it's easier for me to create code uh, than to create good graphics, but uh, as everything can be user created, uh, I've already uh, contact uh, with some power users which are willing to uh, create uh, more sophisticated uh, avatars which can be then used by, by users. Uh, also, I told before, there are editors and tools uh, to create uh, locations. Location is my term for a region. Uh, if you are used to Second Life, you can uh, create any objects, like I told, animations. Uh, you can import images, textures, models, even sound clips, which can be uh, then replayed uh, by pressing uh, a button. Uh, new features also for, for the education. You can upload uh, different kinds uh, of documents. Uh, some documents like PDF can uh, display uh, inside the world. Other documents uh, you can provide for automatic download. So if you have uh, information for your uh, students, you can put it uh, just uh, on an object. So it means if you click the object, uh, then the document is downloaded to the student's client. Uh, other features are the same uh, like we have here. You have uh, a presenter object uh, for managing and displaying slide sets like PowerPoint slides. Um, uh, there is a text-to-speech feature, so it means um, you can uh, create an object and uh, simply uh, bind uh, a text. Uh, it could be a, a single phrase or it could be a whole novel. And if you click the object, then this text is created on the fly and converted to speech. So if you are uh, visually impaired, it's uh, easy also, for example, to have the whole chat window read to you. Um, you can embed uh, any other web page and put it on a prim. So it means uh, we have uh, for demonstration purposes and uh, for collaboration, we simply put a, a Google document um, on a web page and in real time many or several people at once could edit um, the document and everybody else saw the changes in real time uh, inside the virtual world. Um, the last point is a bit uh, 
also in, in technically it's working, but um, I want to provide uh, the client uh, software and uh, parts of the server as open source, so you can uh, host your own region and you can even make changes uh, to your code or to the code base locally so you can implement new features without without compromising or uh, endangering the, the the other users so you can do it for your region you could uh, could play around with a different gravity or something whatever you come up you can implement it yourself and still connect then your your region to the grid And uh, this slide I had to uh, edit today because, uh, from as you see, um, I've added a uh, stereo rendering for Google Cardboard devices. And in yesterday's talks, uh, there was a reference uh, to the old ViewMaster. And uh, this really uh, made me laugh because uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I bought uh, the new ViewMaster VR device. Uh, which looks like uh, the old one, but uh, you can put your phone into it just to test this feature. So I had to put this image uh, on the slide uh, so to see uh, that the virtual world is also ViewMaster compatible. Uh, so we have stereo rendering and you can, uh, can move around the virtual world in, in real, in a VR experience. And another gimmick, it's, uh, I've also implemented support for the Leap Motion Controller, which means um, if you move your hands above the controller, these hand movements are, are applied to your avatar in real time. So uh, when you give a presentation and don't know what to do with your hands, you can simply move your hands in front of your PC and your avatar will mimic your, your movements. Okay, like um, I've said uh, in the beginning, now comes comes a little bit uh, of the or the technical stuff. I will keep it briefly. Um, if you are familiar with uh, basics of web development, um, so uh, it's a it's a classical uh, three tier architecture. So you have um, a visual front end, you have uh, some. Uh, business logic in, in the second tier and behind the persistence layer is a, a usual database. Um, things are here, it's, uh, everything is based on a pure uh, plain uh, Apache web server. Uh, behind is a My, MySQL database and the technology, uh, it's PHP uh, and, and SQL on the server and JavaScript, HTML, WebGL, WebRTC uh, on the client side. So this means uh, when you rent uh, an online presence for your personal homepage, this is a technology which is usually always available. So the requirements on the server are really, really low. Um, when you visited uh, the non-profit virtual world uh, on Monday, uh, it's also sometimes when I tell uh, the server specifications, uh, people are wondering because this is a single core server with 512 megabytes of RAM. So this is even less computing power than your smartphone. And it was able to run a two-digit number of avatars spread over several regions using voice all at the same time. And uh, the server load was still uh, below 30%. Um, yeah, uh, so a uh, number of developers won so far. Uh, I still know every line of code personally. Um, this will change now. Um, we'll come to this later. And it's just to give you an impression about the size of the project so far. Uh, I've listed the, num uh, the number of lines of code uh, using the different technologies. So the, the most thing is uh, the client side. Uh, this uh, contains a physics engine, collision detection, and everything. So inside uh, the browser, uh, there are about 60,000 lines of JavaScript code. Uh, and these are compressed, uh, minimized to about uh, 500 kilobytes, which allowed it at the beginning of startup. There's also one thing uh, which is always very amazing for newcomers. 
but it only uh, for a simple region it only takes 15 to 20 seconds um, to enter a region and everything is loaded already. Um, from my hosting provider it's also possible to switch servers between uh, Europe and, and the United States. So for example, uh, Selby's World is hosted in the United States, which means uh, that uh, latency is even lower as when you connect to one of my servers here in Europe. So everything is possible just by, uh, by configuration. Uh, this is just an overview about uh, the architecture which is really the, the two components, uh, the client which contains uh, the viewer and the server side. So as you can see, uh, everything is really pretty standard. There are uh, no big dependencies to external software. The only lux uh, luxury I'm, uh, I'm using, uh, this is um, this uh, on the client side, I'm using 3GS and uh, this single web RTC. These are uh, some wrappers around the, the, the core technologies inside the browser and uh, make your life a little bit easier because uh, it takes the complexity and also the, uh, yeah, the risk for bugs uh, are reduced by using some uh, already established software. But these are both uh, open source, so you have uh, always have the source code and can you make uh, your own changes or bug fixes if necessary. And this is uh, the global architecture, so how uh, everything is interconnected. It means uh, every grid has um, a central server which is used for user authentication and asset management and then you can have any number uh, of uh, location servers which are hosting uh, the specific regions. Uh, so as a rule of thumb, uh, one location server can host uh, up to 10, uh, sometimes up to 20 uh, regions. Um, the, the main load is not uh, how many regions, the main load is uh, depending on how many avatars are uh, online on a, on a single server. So depending on server configuration, I can have between 100 and 200 avatars spread over uh, the regions on one server. But it's mainly a, a thing, uh, a cost-based calculation, because sometimes it's cheaper to have two small servers than one large server, and the two small servers are able uh, and better balanced to handle more avatars than the single one, the single big server. But everything is possible, so the, the architecture is uh, scalable horizontally, and if you need uh, more virtual space, you simply add another server. Um, usually, in, uh, for this presentation now, it's time uh, to uh, see cyber launch in action, because, but we've already seen it. And so I just prepared uh, some, some screenshots. So, uh, yeah, as soon as everything rests, you see uh, there are many kinds of different regions already. Uh, you can, like the police car, you can import uh, <coughs> objects from, from external sources. And here are some of the more uh, the latest builds. And everything you see was created inside the world itself. Dieter, um, uh, one of yeah. the individuals here is saying, is it possible to transfer our scripts and our own stuff that we build in Second Life to the platform for Cyber Lounge? Yeah, um, also it, um, that's one, one thing uh, I'm working uh, currently on. So, um, not also most things you can import in Second Life, you can also import uh, into my world. Um, the other thing is, it's not only based on, on Second Life, but especially with OpenSim, Kitely, and the others, if we have a grid where you can in, uh, export your whole region as an uh, OAR file, um, I'm working on creating an importer for these uh, files. So it means you can hopefully soon uh, export your whole region uh, from OpenSIM and you can import it into Cyber Launch. And the thing is, uh, also 
the technical part is, is easy. The thing is, uh, you have some limitations inside the browser, which will make things a little bit more complicated because in a browser tab, you have limited memory. You can only use resources the browser gives to you. So it might uh, cause that uh, during the loading of an OAR file, um, I have to reduce complexity of the objects. So, but this is something I'm experimenting with and uh, I will hopefully be able to give you an update in a couple of weeks. Uh, the first uh, tests were very, very successful. Uh, we could already import a, a whole terrain uh, from, from the OR file, identify all the objects. And uh, so this will mean uh, it will be hopefully very easy to transfer content from uh, an open sim based grid or a Halcyon grid uh, to my world. So you don't have to start from scratch, but you can take more or less most of your region with you. Uh, yes, the, uh, and the other question from Techie Man. Um, the, the uh, embedding cyber launch is very easy because you just have to create an iframe in your page, uh, which sets the source uh, to the um, cyber launch region. You can uh, address every region individually by a unique ID, uh, like uh, the link uh, Selby always provides for his location. And if you put this link into an iframe, then this uh, region is directly opened inside your web page. Okay, um, for the final part, um, yeah, what have I planned for the future, what I'm currently working on? Um, of course, I want to make uh, some general improvements uh, regarding the tools, the handling, uh, the representation. Um, some of the features are already available. For example, uh, lights and true shadows are already working. Uh, it's always um, a balance uh, between performance, and uh, presentation, so it means the better the graphics, uh, the higher the requirements regarding the hardware. Uh, but if you have a really uh, a decent, you don't need a high-end gaming PC, uh, I'm still using a, a three-year-old notebook uh, for development, and uh, most of the uh, regions are still running between 50 and 60 frames per second, even with lights and shadows. Uh, but what's very really, really on the top of my list is uh, to improve uh, the quality of the avatars. Uh, because if you talk with anybody, uh, the most important thing is to be able to individualize your avatar. And so this is very high priority. And uh, that's what I'm currently working on and it also will be available with one of the next patches. Um, with my discussions with many users, uh, we're still trying to do a, or build a platform which can be used for, for everything, but uh, there are currently some developments which uh, yeah, uh, suggest to have a, a small split between different flavors uh, of the platform. So uh, one really will be uh, a very simple virtual world uh, called Cyber World, uh, just really to uh, bring in new users and show them, uh, show them how simple and how great it is to be in a virtual world. So um, this is also some of the ideas that Selby gave me. Um, uh, it could be a first step of bringing people into uh, the more sophisticated virtual worlds because uh, one thing you can do is, for example, you can make uh, an open sim or a Kitely viewer available for download in a browser-based virtual world, and then you can guide the users uh, through the installation and configuration process. Uh, directly with voice and everything, uh, you can show them some slides with screenshots, and uh, this way you can bring users into Second Life, or every other virtual world, which else would have said, oh no, it's too complicated, I quit, even before trying. So this will be uh, such an entry-level world. Uh, you will 
can have talks with the people, you can show them some, some features of a browser-based world and can tell them it's even better in a real neutral world and uh, you will uh, take their fear away that it's too complicated. You can make it an easy and a progressive uh, way. Um, the second uh, flavor will be, uh, of course, for entertainment, for leisure. This is uh, the, the original uh, cyber launch grid, uh, which was mostly used for people uh, coming in, uh, listening to music, have uh, daily or weekly parties. Uh, that's for many people sufficient. They don't even want anything more. And that's okay with me. And I can provide this with, with this platform. Uh, more interesting is uh, something um, I'm yeah I started a couple of months ago. Uh, some uh, uh, developments, especially for for educators, teachers, and everything, uh, under the label of uh, Metaverse School. I also reversed uh, reserved uh, the URL and the, the domain uh, Metaverse University, but so far Metaverse School fits the things I'm doing. I will talk about later a bit. And uh, then for counseling, we have the non-profit uh, virtual world, which more or less is run by Selby so far, and which can be used by uh, non-profit organizations also as a first uh, step to to uh, receive or to, to welcome visitors, because it's anonymous, no registration, no installation. As there are some special features implemented, for example, um, you don't have to be present all the time. Uh, you can set a kind of alarm, means uh, you will receive an email or if somebody enters your virtual world. So you will get a notification and then you can uh, go online in a couple of seconds and greet the, the, the visitor there directly. And also something, uh, this is more for the uh, mid and long term future, is a, a special platform uh, for collaboration. That means, um, for example, also my imagination is, has uh, some virtual meeting rooms or presentation rooms more for corporate use uh, to reduce uh, business trips. Uh, they probably will not uh, need whole regions uh, to host uh, their content just uh, more or less uh, an office infrastructure in virtual, so they can have meetings, uh, exchange ideas, but also uh, do some brainstorming because of the persistence. So if you write uh, something or if you use a, a virtual post-it and put it on the wall, it will be there two weeks later when you have a follow-up appointment. So, um, yeah, a couple of months ago, I. I founded uh, a company called Metaverse School as uh, in I think in the US it's a limited liability company. In German it's a GmbH. Uh, it already has uh, two part-time employees helping me with uh, setting up everything. Uh, more also two full uh, time employees are planned for end of this year, start of next year. Uh, it will be based uh, on the existing platform. Um, and the idea behind is uh, to bring really in a, a third dimension into online learning. So um, I know it's a it's a big goal, uh, but uh, you have to dream big. <laughs> so uh, what I want to create is something similar to the Khan Academy, but in in a virtual world, because uh, sometimes it's not enough to have uh, passive content to be consumed, like videos and presentations. Sometimes you really have to have an instructor which is there in person, which can answer your questions and help you uh, with your work directly. So I think it's a, not a, a competition. Uh, these two models will complement each other. Uh, so you can have a combination of classical teaching, like classroom teaching or in a virtual environment, but also for, for self-learning. Self-learning is important from one point of view because uh, usually every student has their own learning pace, their speed, and uh, for some people it's enough to see uh, or read a document one times, another one has to read it five times uh, 
to understand it fully. And with self-learning, you can adapt to, to, to everyone's speed. Um, so um, this platform will then be specialized um, in education. It will have a, a dedicated role concept. Uh, so it means you will have administrators which can uh, manage the regions. You can have uh, then the role of instructors which can uh, bring in content and provide uh, information and students. So uh, it means the a number of actions or the, the, the set of actions you can uh, always execute is depending on your role. Uh, so it means the, the user interface uh, will be simpler for students, a little bit more complicated for teachers, and uh, only the administrators have to uh, deal with all the stuff. Um, I'm, I started to plan and to implement uh, additional tools and interactive objects, uh, so especially for uh, if you want to um, learn a new uh, language, you can have, uh, for example, uh, interactive objects will, will tell you uh, the name or a term for this object in, in any given language. Uh, uh, you will have a, a set of pre-made uh, templates for classrooms, learning environments. So uh, if you are a teacher, you don't have to start from scratch. You can uh, select one of the templates available and then adapt it to your special needs. So this will also uh, be much easier to start uh, your own education place uh, as if you have only an, an empty region. Uh, I will also uh, work on uh, more ways uh, to integrate external um, software. So for example, uh, you can have a 3D environment and uh, Inside the virtual world, you have uh, uh, like a pop-up, uh, and you can have pupils do a Moodle test, which is a uh, direct uh, connection to the 3D environment. For example, you can give tasks, uh, or they have to answer questions in Moodle, uh, and to find the answer, they have to uh, do a little quest inside the virtual world. But everything happens on one screen inside one browser tab. And uh, to make things even more convenient, so if you're not familiar with Moodle, um, I will also um, add a, a little questionnaire module so where you can do simple multiple choice tests directly in world and have a, later then a statistics and evaluation of all your students. So, and if, if you are a teacher, what are the benefits of using such a specialized platform? Um, the points are, um, it's very easy to set up because of the technology involved. So it means uh, I, I hope to pre uh, be able to prepare in a couple of months uh, a whole installer, which you can simply or more or less use directly on any PC in your organization, or like uh, it's also possible with OpenSim today. So you can have something like uh, Metaverse School on a stick. It means you just have to plug in a, a USB stick, uh, start uh, one file, execute it, and you have Metaverse School platform running in your environment. Uh, it's, the, the plan is also to, to uh, make it very easy to import um, any content. So if you have documents, images, anything you want to have, you can simply import it uh, into the environment. The next thing is very important. Uh, it was one of the things I had on my list uh, very at the very top. It has to be a safe uh, environment. So. You can uh, grant and deny access on a very fine, detailed level. So it means if you have uh, your classroom, you can make it or configure it in such a way that nobody else uh, then on your whitelist can enter this classroom. And also, uh, if you are in a grid, you can make it uh, such a way that your students cannot leave the classroom without your permission. So it's not, so it prevents. Uh, pupils to uh, visit any location available automatically. So this is a really safe environment. And another thing so far, uh, how the uh, 
avatars are, are made now. Uh, it's also uh, very easy to configure uh, right now. Uh, you cannot even drop your clothes uh, in most locations. So, uh, uh, sorry, too fast. Um, the infrastructure you need to run uh, are very low, like I said. Uh, the server requirements uh, are, are uh, lower than uh, the requirements for your smartphone. Uh, finally, it will uh, support a wide range of devices, so no matter if your students are equipped with tablets, with Chromebooks, laptops or PCs, in principle everything should work. And uh, you don't want to have to leave the world uh, when you want to create new content. You can do it everything inside the application. So it's also very convenient for you. You don't have uh, to learn uh, 10 other tools which are not uh, primarily connected to a virtual world. You can do it right here. You see immediately what you have done, change it and everything. So. Um, and uh, to bring things forward, uh, this is uh, uh, something I'm currently uh, spending a lot of time with. Um, I'm in a cooperation with a German college. Uh, this is a uh, German Fachhochschule. It's one level below a university. And uh, it's a course in organizational behavior. And I have a group of nine students which are currently creating um, a learning or studying environment for next year's uh, first semesters. So um, we made uh, or had a lot of brainstorming sessions how to be uh, able to present the contents necessary for new students uh, to come up to speed uh, how things are done, uh, how learning uh, should be conducted and especially how to do uh, work in a group because it's always easy to do things for, for a single user but uh, especially creativity is teamwork so if you work in a group it's much more efficient and we wanted to find out how uh, or which tools to use how to present information so it can be used by a whole group of students at the same time these uh, learning environments will be available uh, 24 7 and uh, yeah, it's planned uh, with a full rollout uh, next winter to have 400 students in total, 40 groups with 10 students each, and each group uh, will work on the same topics. So uh, the goals for this project uh, right now are uh, to create uh, a template a template for this studying room. So this is also uh, like a blueprint. Um, every group of students will get one of these rooms and they can then uh, change everything according to their needs. Uh, the, it's also one uh, thing is to prepare the, the documentation or all the material for this course in a format which can be used especially, especially in a virtual world. So uh, to have a mix uh, of videos, uh, audio, documents, and also some interactive task boards uh, where you can uh, work on your weekly uh, homework. Uh, so uh, it should be uh, really it should replace the need for the students uh, to come up together once or twice weekly in a group all at the same time uh, because for 40 groups uh, you usually don't have even uh, the space available uh, in a physical space. So now you have here uh, independent from geography and independent from time. So I'm really curious uh, how this will work out. Um, I've already uh, offered to, to give you uh, all an update uh, when, when the project is done uh, about mid of July. And uh, then you can also do a field trip to visit uh, this template room with uh, the content already there. So, just in time, um, let's uh, all from my side, uh, if there are questions, suggestions or ideas, I'm open to everything.
And yeah, thank you so far for your attention. Thank you, Edward, for that wonderful presentation. And, and I love this idea that, that perhaps you could come back and give another talk for all of us. We could reconvene um, whenever you're ready, even if the course isn't officially running. So um, I'll leave you to uh, read the questions in the chat. Um, or if someone responds to you, um, ask a question in voice, then Lira or I can get the question into the chat. Yeah, oh, I cool. see so. So, okay. Um, Analysis of self-learning, yes. Um, the college I'm working with um, already is running a, a Moodle platform and uh, some of the assessments there will be directly incorporated into the virtual world. So you don't have to switch between uh, web pages. Um, the goal is to have the Moodle test directly pop up inside the virtual world where you can give the answers for your self-learning and also the evaluation. Yeah. Uh, uh, Did you see the question, Dieter? Yes, um, I see it was it, from yes, about, Okay, about great. The, uh, about the open source. Um, yes, uh, I hope uh, later this year already. Uh, the thing is, um, I st I'm just uh, rewriting some parts of the, the client code. Uh, I'm switching from JavaScript uh, to TypeScript uh, to have uh, yeah, more level of control. It's, it's, it gives cleaner code. So, uh, in principle, I could publish it uh, in a couple of uh, months, but let's say it about uh, probably end of the year, I will provide uh, a version which can be downloaded and installed on any uh, of your infrastructure. Yeah, thank you. But that was the main goal. To, also, my principle always is keep it simple. And uh, I think most software is too clustered and too complicated uh, for, for people to use. Uh, everybody knows it. If you use Microsoft Word, for example, uh, we usually use less than 10% of the features which are available. And still, you can write a whole novel or uh, a whole publication. <clears throat> Dieter, earlier the question about yeah. importing content, uh, the first part of it was from Second Life, and of course the answer was from OpenSim or um, Halcyon-based yeah. world. So uh, there is a way to extract content by HTML or object, right, from Second Life. Of course, this isn't trivial, and you have to have created all the content, but uh, could you talk towards that? Yeah, so the, the thing is, um, my or the architecture of my platform is very extensible. So it means um, I would have to look into the uh, the format in which Second Life exports things. I think it's an XML format, and have to convert it in a uh, let's say browser compatible uh, thing. Usually, you can say it, it takes uh, a couple of weeks uh, to implement such a converter. And uh, so it means if you want such a thing, uh, I'm really, uh, I would be glad to provide it. It's just a matter of prioritization. So uh, if there is enough demand for such a feature, I will gladly implement it. Dieter, I think the, the issue here is uh, people create custom curriculum content in a virtual world and rather than recreate it in, in the cyber world, right, the cyber lounge, it's probably easier if there's a lot of it, right, to export and import. Uh, especially when it comes to, for me, it's like student content. From 52 classes, I have all these student projects and other things. And if we were going to benefit from those, right, yeah, um, but, uh, right which now, is this content? Yeah. Um, well, it's objects, it's scenes, they create holo holodecks, they create 
simulations, you know, anything you see around us right now, they create this kind of stuff, but usually to model ideas for the curriculum, for whatever the concepts are, right? So they create a project in every class, that's what I'm saying. And so archiving those projects would be ideal, you know, exporting them. That would, that's one of the reasons that it would be great to export. Ah, okay, now I understand. Yeah, um, I had a discussion just a couple of days ago, I think it was with Mary Burns, about such things because I think um, you simply need a special browser, uh, as a viewer, I think Singularity, which is able to export objects directly from Second Life. Because I think with the Second Life default uh, viewer, it's not possible to to export everything. But I might be wrong. It's also, it's simply something I have not uh, thought about uh, before. I think so, Maggie. Yeah, but I can. Uh, I will give it. A, uh, I will have a look at it, and uh, yeah. So, if it's a, a usual data format, then then conversion and importing it shouldn't be too difficult. I've managed right now with a yeah a whole number of different uh, formats of, of any kind. So, uh, in in principle, the, uh, the the technologies behind Second Life and also the rendering in my world are very similar. So it's just a matter of conversion. Ah, so it's just uh, if it's possible from SL to Kitely, then yeah, then I think it's really just a matter of effort. Yeah, good point. Uh, digital rights management, but that's a uh, a real topic on its own. Uh, you cannot make sure with a technical uh, way. Uh, that people only upload things for which they have the copyright. Uh, this is a real problem, uh, a legal problem, but uh, there's no work around it. So uh, you have to have uh, the possibility for uh, people to claim their rights and in, in worst case you have to remove content uh, because it's copyrighted somewhere by someone else. Right, Dieter. I only mention that because yeah. years ago, <clears throat> the Library of Congress bought a lot of content in Second Life thinking to archive our culture, right? To get a snapshot and save it in the library. And the problem was they didn't understand that when you buy content in here, you're not allowed to export it, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> even if you're the Library of Congress and you have noble intentions, it's a no. So, um, uh, that was a, p a point of awkwardness, and of course, it, it caused everyone to think differently about what digital rights mean. Yeah, but it's also some, something which is really, really uh, unique to Second Life because they changed it a couple of years ago that everything you create is owned by, by Linden Labs and not by you yourself anymore. And I think this was a, a wrong step. Uh, uh, of course, it made things easier to handle from a legal side, but uh, in principle, uh, in the virtual world, when you create something, you keep the rights on the thing. That's, I think, the only practicable way to, to handle things. But with Linden Labs, it was different. And uh, so, yeah, you export it, uh, you create it, you export it, but you lost your right to, to copy it. But there's a, there's, um, a couple of years ago, there was a whole book just about this topic, Digital Rights Management in Virtual Worlds. And it's a really dry and very uh, legal theme, which is only think, uh, fun for, for lawyers maybe to read. But uh, I found at first it was very confusing for normal people. And with some, some things uh, you think, uh, this cannot be true, but uh, sometimes the law is really on the side of the providers, not on the right of the on the side of the creators.
Yeah, uh, not always. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to read, write, think, <laughs> uh, answer questions, and I got a dozen IMs going. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, also the, the only rule is uh, if you import something, uh, always check twice or even three times uh, who is the owner of uh, the copyright. Also, even for my demonstration, I, I also built a library um, uh, inside the launch, and I really made sure that I only imported content, uh, even the textures were photographs I did myself in the British Museum, and the books I put on display are from Project Gutenberg. But you really have to make sure that you own or have the rights to use the things. And that's always, even if you buy, uh, resources online, you always have to look at this at the small print where you can use it and where not. I have to admit, here lately I look for buying textures that allow me the rights to use in other virtual worlds and then of course tell me what their restrictions are so I can be compliant. I really yeah. like that because creating everything yourself is laborious for an educator. Yes, the same for me because I want to create a platform and, and so far I spent half my time creating content just so that people can use it without having to create anything on their own in the beginning. And I also love to use nice textures, uh, but like you, uh, I found some sometimes, I found it, and in the small print was, uh, you can may only use it in Second Life, but not in other virtual worlds, for example. Yeah, there are a few manufacturers that share, and I really like that, you know. <laughs> and of course, yeah. I, I then spread yeah. the word about them. <laughs> Yeah, but, but they want to uh, they want you to pay twice. So you have to buy uh, the you have to pay the royalties in Second Life, and you can buy the same things in the Kaiji uh, store. Uh, but then you are uh, okay on a legal side. But you cannot use the same textures in both uh, because of the the, the fine print uh, of the license. So that's really uh, annoying, but uh, yeah. Yeah, you're very welcome. It was a real, real honor and pleasure to, to present this today. And yeah, we can schedule uh, on demand uh, a follow-up when I have results of the student group's work. I can do it either here or in the usual uh, education roundtable. Anything would be wonderful. Thank you so much. We really appreciate um, this talk. It's been extremely, extremely useful to a lot of us and very, very, uh, very interesting. Um, and I'm looking forward nice. to the follow-up. <laughs> yeah, I think it's also, it's a really new uh, way of looking at virtual worlds because virtual worlds can be simple too, but still provide a lot of functionality. Well, I'm um, going to put the the link to Cyber Lounge into the chat again. Um, and I, I won't uh, follow you over there because I have something else I have an appointment for in a, about 10 minutes. But if anybody would like to try out CyberWorld, uh, there's the link in the chat. And um, we will have the, the film visit from Selby's presentation up on the YouTube playlist probably tomorrow. Um, and being a teacher, I'm grading today, so I won't be able to get it up till tomorrow. But uh, thank you, everybody, for coming. And thank you so much, um, uh, Dieter, for, for giving this presentation. The, the concepts are amazing. And there's such a wonderful, especially when we get into the education 
things such a wonderful attention to detail and what what the potential user what the potential teacher is really going to need so that's that's so great to hear that um, that's being really built into everything that you're doing so it's just fantastic so thank you so much you're so welcome. It's really a labor of passion. <laughs> well, it's it's fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Well, guys, I'm going to turn the recording off now, and it should be available, um, as I said, tomorrow in the SL MOOC with all of the rest of the missing materials from today, uh, from this week. Um, and uh, please feel free to hang around the neighborhood and hang around and talk some more. I just have to sign off now. So thank you very much. Thank you again, Dieter, and thanks everybody for coming.